kind of a two-part question here to kind of guide the rest of our conversation. What are the other things you envision Backtrack doing with all the context that you're gathering from these conversations? I have some ideas, but I wanna hear from you. Where do you see this going? And then what are some of the other areas that the event space might be lacking in terms of using AI day-to-day -day, uh, in their business? Jordan, I'll take the first part, you take the second. Yeah, sounds like a point, go for it. All right, so what you guys might not, so here's, here's the biggest issue in the event industry with AI. Everybody knows that they should use it. They just don't necessarily know how or what tools to use. And that's where we come in. We have a whole course that we're building on that. Um, so we started this, you started your question off with, can we, you know, generate, we were waiting for the day where you can generate proposals, let's mm -hmm. say with AI. AI is just another word for obviously artificial intelligence, but AI has been around for, I mean, if you've ever used Google, Facebook, I mean, these are all built on AI machine learning. It's, it's. It's not all the same thing, but it's essentially what, when pe they, people use them interchangeably. Today is the day you can, I mean, for the last five years, you've been able to create proposals. The, the difference now is that within the last, I'd say six to 12 months is you can have it fully generate the proposal from start to finish. And not only that, it would, you can also have it sent out to the prospect for you. And when you, when they say something like, Hey, I don't really like, uh, you know, Hey, Chris, I don't really like this design can make a new one. You can have it make new ones for you. So the technology, so what's crazy in my, and to, and to finish this point, the technology is all there. It's just the know, it's someone, someone like us coming in and saying, Hey, by the way, use a tool like Zapier to help you do this. And then you can go off to the races. You can hire an intern to this. I've seen this done. They'll, they'll hire an intern at a high school. I know this one company, I won't name who it is. They hired an intern at a high school. And this kid has completely automated like six of the jobs that they're doing right now. And I actually talk to him all the time because now he knows more about it than I do. We've been just pinging back and forth. So like, for example, with a, with a proposal, you can give it your entire pricing sheet. You can give it all of the costs to your business, what services you offer, and just, and you don't even have to be very smart about it. You can just give it to it. Let's say a chat GPT like platform and just say, here's uh, the company that I'm talking to. Here's their website, generate a proposal. Here's what they want. In a few seconds, it's just going to generate a proposal for you. But then you get into the automation side. And Chris, this, this is where we left off in DC. It's one thing to generate the proposal. It's another thing to just have it completely send it off and handle all the requests and responses and go back and forth for you. Again, it's all possible as of today, which is, I feel like we're living in sci-fi. You kind of, <laughs> you know what, Hunter? You, 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 had a great, you had a great point a second ago. You, I was going to, one of the questions I was going to ask is, is the evolutionist going to require employers like me to hire a, you know, for lack of a better phrase, a, a chief AI officer or somebody who sort of owns our thinking? Or, or is it not a dedicated employee? This is really behavior change for everybody in the company that just has to embrace using the, the you know, the tools and the resources. that exist. In other words, don't rely on one person, but everybody's got to come around to understanding this. As of today, I think that the tools are very scattered. So you need somebody like a, you know, let's, let's call it an intern, but maybe a, an AI Especially. expert for yeah. today. Yeah. But if you fast forward you now, uh, what, what do you guys use to generate your proposals? I'm assuming like Microsoft office. Oh, it'll be, it'll Does be that, that or right? it's, it's, you know, it's tricked out Excel templates or, but I think that in, in the, sure. in the exhibit house space, the challenge hunter is. Every single solution is different. So even though it's yeah. a 20 by 20 island space and there's a tower and there's three demo kiosk stations and there's a conversation area, there's this one has 17 graphic images and this one has four. The images are all different. Maybe they're going to be produced differently. So that's changing cost. These are fabric. Those are inkjet. These are backlit. Uh, so when you look at all those variables, um, and so when you, first of all, it's heartwarming when you go, no, the technology does exist because I have seen designers on a stage say, design this. And in 21 seconds, it's a pretty kick-ass looking, you know, island exhibit built for a brand that has all the functional requirements. I, we didn't get into the discussion in in those moments, is it actually pricing it out? But I, I told you, I just saw this great presentation at a conference last week. And my takeaway was, he goes, look, 
you know, your database is filled with information and that's how you choose to put a proposal together. What, what you're betting on with AI is you may not have the information in your database, but it does. So why not put it to work? Which again, the lizards in my brain are running around right now going, is not some of that proprietary? Is it, ex is it accessing somebody else's proprietary? Is there a way to protect that if somebody doesn't want their, you know, cool quoting system? You know, how does all that, how does all that work? Or is it all just a wild, wild risk right now? Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll let Jordan finish the second half of the question, but that the, what your direct question is more about, you know, it's data privacy and, and what's the next evolution. Look, today it is very manual. We probably have to sit for an hour and put it all together. And it'd be a very nice little box that we can hand to any one of your employees and they can start putting together proposals. It won't be perfect, but it'll get close enough where it does 90% of the work in that last 10%. But look, especially if you're using any sort of Microsoft, Google, Apple products, I don't know if you know this, but OpenAI, one of the biggest companies in the world now, which is which is leading the conversation. That's why we're even talking about AI, really, is because of OpenAI's ChatGPT. Uh, they're major stakeholders, Microsoft. So if you're using Microsoft Teams, you're using Microsoft Office Suite, it's just going to be built in. It's going to say, hey, Chris, you're building a, a proposal here. I'm sure, actually, I think they even started rolling this out publicly. Hey, you're building a proposal and based on your other proposals, here's what I think. And it's going to have a chatbot built right into it where you can say, actually, you know, this one, I think we're going to do inkjet and it'll be able to be smart enough to remember that for the next time. That's today. If you, if you wait a year from now, or maybe even two, you can use a product like backtrack and there's a million other tools out there that can record online meetings. You can have the meeting and it can be smart enough to just generate the proposal for you. It, again, the technology is already there. If we're just waiting for those big conglomerates to just put the put the tech together and just yeah. be able to whip it up in seconds. You can have the proposal ready for the for the client by the end of the call, not waiting for you know a bunch of other research and stuff that you have to do now. It's so, all coming. It just has to be yeah. put together. Yeah, Hunter, is that basically what you guys have on your roadmap of what you're going to be adding to Backtrack or no? What, like, what is kind of the next thing up to bat for for Backtrack? As of, so this is the first time we'll announce it. Jordan, I don't mean to keep going, man, but I just- You're on fire. You're on <laughs> Sorry. Fire, sir. Keep, I'm excited. Someone's well caffeinated. This is the first time we'll- Yeah, dude. No, I might chocolate milk this morning, so I'm up. <laughs> this will be the first time we're announcing publicly, other than my tweet or uh, my LinkedIn post last night, where you can actually go from having a conversation with somebody so all you have to do is snap a photo of just their LinkedIn QR code. It could be something as simple as that, or even their business card. It'll take all that information and whatever you're missing, like a phone number, a LinkedIn, their name, whatever you're missing out of that information, we're just going to fill it in all for you, send it all to your CRM, and it can have automatic emails and temp you know, we have templates that we can provide. But it'll send out emails and it can even book the meeting by the time you get out of the show. You can have a a full CRM and meetings booked and you didn't, have, didn't even have to type in a, a single character. That's the vision. You should be able to have a conversation, just have one button and all this other stuff just magically happens in the background and not a single thing ever has to be done again by the salesperson. 